So that fellow couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? Amen. So that fellow didn't take the sacraments. Didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary. Didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe. Didn't tithe. He went to heaven. He went to hell. You saved? Didn't keep the law. He didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments. He broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule. He didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory. He woke up in the pit. Are you saved? Amen. You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest by kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. It's like that. You have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that. All right. In this video, I want to talk a bit about the rapture, but the resurrection right before the rapture. I was talking with my wife about tomorrow, the 16th of June, being about the time of the Feast of Shavuot, and Aaron from God a Minute has been making a couple videos about that. And I have been saying for a while now, I think a few years now, that I believe the rapture would be on Shavuot, uh, Ascension Day, when Jesus ascended to heaven. And if it wasn't that day, I, I would believe it would be the Feast of Trumpets, Pentecost, the Feast of Wine there, or whenever God wanted. But if God did it according to one of his appointed times, my first guess would be Shavuot, the Ascension Day, when Jesus ascended after he rose from the dead. And I was thinking about that. And I was like, well, we know that the dead in Christ rise first. And we know there's nothing new under the sun, right? Ecclesiastes 1.9. So I was like, okay, when Jesus was crucified and put into the tomb, and he rose, many of the saints of the Old Testament rose with him. How long were they walking around? At least for the time Jesus was walking around, right? And then he ascended up to, to heaven. And it's the Feast of Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. I believe that's where they wave uh, the, the first fruits. Right? Or I shouldn't say the first fruits. Like, I think the first fruits happened at that resurrection when Jesus raised from the dead. And they actually start to wave the the bundle of wheat or barley and what have you. And I would imagine that would be the saints that rose up. As we read in Ephesians, when Jesus rose, he brought captivity captive with him. And when you read before Jesus rose from the dead, paradise or the Garden of Eden or Abraham's bosom, was referred to being under the earth. But then when Paul talks about paradise, he says it's in heaven. That's because that's where Jesus took it. So all those people that were there would end up being in heaven. So if there's nothing new under the sun, then I don't know if we would be raptured on Shavuot. If Shavuot's tomorrow, and the uh, that's if it's tomorrow, because you might actually calculate the Sabbath using the moon. And I'm actually going to do a video about that, explaining how that works, and show why people believe that by using the scriptures. There's actually some validity to it. Uh, but 
if that's not true, and it's you know every seventh day in spite of the month, it has nothing to do with the seventh day of the month. It has to just do with every seventh day. Well, then tomorrow would be Shavuot. And if the dead raise first, they would most likely raise back to life on first fruits, wouldn't they? So if this is the year of the rapture, you know, perhaps they raise from the dead right at the same time we're going to be raptured, right? Right in that same moment or that same hour, right? That same day. But history repeating itself, right? Nothing new under the sun. The, the resurrection happened on first fruits. And then Jesus ascended on Shavuot. So I'd imagine that's exactly how it would play out again. And while talking about this, I was talking to my wife about how the Seventh-day Adventists wouldn't believe it. Because I used to be a Seventh-day Adventist. And as a Seventh-day Adventist, we believe that when you're dead, you're dead, right? It, your soul is sleeping. It has no consciousness of what's going on on earth or anywhere else because we don't believe hell is anything other than the grave. And I say we as in this is what I used to believe as a Seventh-day Adventist. So when you saw someone like a dead loved one, you would know that it's actually a demon pretending to be your loved one. But you see, at this point, the dead that would raise, because you say the Seventh-day Adventists, let's say they have a loved one, a brother, a sister, for example, who believed the gospel, but let's say they died five, ten years ago. And then, all of a sudden, tomorrow or next first fruits that brother or sister raises from the dead and comes to talk to him do you think they'll believe it maybe but they already have it in their head that no nope, it's a devil it's a demon so they already have a predisposition to say this isn't real you're trying to fool me. You're trying to trick me. You see how Satan has already prepared for that. So if it happens, he already has something pre-programmed to these people that they won't listen to it. They'll reject it. And then even after people are raptured, they'll come up with some reason why uh, that's not really what happened. Even though we told them that's exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be a resurrection, and then we're going to be raptured. And we told you beforehand and before it happens, so that when it happens you would believe, and even then you don't believe. Because they already have it set that they are the remnant church. They're the ones in the truth. They're the ones to give the truth to everybody. And this has made them a very arrogant and prideful people, just like the Roman Catholic Church. I believe they're the one true church from the start of the church so they have this pride about it where they don't listen to anybody else because they already have all the truth so they're they don't care about actually hearing you out and having a, a a conversation no they want to talk at you not to you so they just do their monologue and you take it and it's a it's a real shame but that's how both these groups are and the I just wanted to talk about that, just in case any Seventh-day Adventists check this out. And they have a loved one who actually believed the gospel, has been born again. Saved by the grace of God, not because of their works, not because of their law-keeping, but because Jesus Christ saved them and they put their faith in that. And they resurrected. And they're trying to tell them about this stuff. But they reject it because they think it's a demon tricking them. Well, it's not in this case. 
especially if it happens on first fruits. You know, not on this Easter nonsense stuff. You know, the Good Friday and Easter pagan BS on, on actual first fruits, if that, that happens, or on Shavuot, it happens. You know, this is of God. Right? Because people like me are telling you it's going to happen before it happens. Right? Uh, so that when it does happen, you would believe. And then obviously there would be a rapture soon after that. Either about 50 days or so, or that the exact same day. I don't know. But if people raise from the dead on first fruits, I'm guessing we're going home on Shavuot. Uh, but anyway, with all that being said, thanks for watching. Thanks for hearing me out. Take care. All right. I just wanted to make a quick video here to put at the end of all my videos encouraging you to prayfully get into the scriptures as we read here in Hebrews chapter 12 at verse 2 it says looking on to Jesus the author and finisher of our faith and this is very interesting that it refers to Jesus as the author of our faith an author is somebody who writes and in Romans chapter 10 verses 16 and 17 it says but they have not all obeyed the gospel for isaiah saith lord who hath believed our report so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god so you see here how jesus is the author and finisher of our, finisher of our, of our faith and how you get faith from hearing the word of god jesus is the word of god the Bible, the scriptures are the written word of God. It is God in our world. It's God's representative in our world. And that would be the King James Bible. And if you're saying it doesn't say read, it says hear. Well, then read it out loud, my friends. I know some of you are wise asses, and that's what you're going to say. Well, then read it out loud. And you build your faith. And you notice how obeying the gospel here is about believing it. That's how you obey it. The gospel is the good news of our salvation. That Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. But coming back to the word of God here, we are told in Isaiah 34, 16, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. This is very fitting because Isaiah has 66 chapters just like there's 66 books in the bible and if you do a study on this you can see that each chapter of isaiah lines up with each book of the bible the first chapter for genesis the last chapter for revelation have fun doing that and why should you seek out the book in the of the lord and read so that jesus never tells you this ye do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God, as we read here in Matthew 22, 29, when he's talking to the Sadducees who are coming to him with a very silly question that anybody could answer if they actually knew the scriptures. But you see, the Sadducees, they didn't use the whole Old Testament. They just used Moses. So they didn't get the light from the Old Testament to help you understand the Torah, just like the New Testament shines light and helps you understand the Old Testament. None of it adds or removes from what Moses wrote. It helps you understand what Moses wrote. That's why Isaiah tells us here in Isaiah 8 verse 20, to the law, which is the instructions, the Torah, what God told Moses to write, that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, first five books of your Bible there. It says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So you see, you test the people to see if they actually have light in them. There's people who have an outward show of light, as Satan himself can come as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. But how do you test the spirits to see if there's truly light in them? They have to line up according to the scriptures. Jesus was not afraid to be tested in the scriptures. He would say, have you not read? 
it is written. To search the scriptures. Bring them up. They testify of me. Right? He wasn't worried about that. Paul wasn't either. Acts 17, 11. He wasn't worried about being tested of the scriptures. He didn't make some nonsense about you can't understand the scriptures. You need me to interpret them. No, he's, he actually called the Berians noble for hearing what he had to say and then searching the scriptures to see if it was so. Because that's what we're supposed to do. If you don't line up with the scriptures, you're not of God. Very simple, very easy. God made it very easy for us to know him and to know who is not of him. He gave us his word and it's super simple. If it doesn't line up with him, then obviously it's somebody else trying to say that they're from him. A stranger trying to kidnap you, right? What does Jesus tell us about the word in John 17, 17? He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So you Christians that want to be sanctified and you're trying to sanctify yourself by repenting of all your sins so that you become sinless. You want that sanctification. You need to get into the word because when you have the word abiding in you, God changes you from the inside out where you're not making the change where you sanctify yourself by becoming some sinless being by focusing on your sins and fighting against them. No, that's just cleaning the outside of the cup and containing your sinful nature. You need to come to Jesus to be born again, sealed with his Holy Spirit, and become one with his Spirit. And as Jesus says in John 6, 63, his word is spirit and it is truth. Flesh profits nothing. You get into the word, you are partaking of the Spirit of God, and God's Spirit is life-giving, as we see in Genesis, bringing life to to things that have no life. You want that life. You want to be sanctified. You need to get into the word. As we're told here in Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 25 through 27. Husbands love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water. By the word. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish. So how do you receive this cleansing? By getting into the word. It is spirit. The spirit is in reference to water. You want that cleansing? Get into the word. That's where you are going to be sanctified so that you would be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. No blemish whatsoever. You need to get into the word so that Jesus is abiding in you and you are abiding in him. You see that? So, moving on to this last verse here, John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Because the only way to know the Father is to know the Son. You can't come to the Father without going through Jesus. When you know Jesus, you know the Father, because they are one. Jesus is the Father in the flesh. And eternal life is to know them. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 7 to these people who are doing a lot of great works in his name. They're prophesying in his name. They're casting out devils in his name. They're doing many mighty works in his name. And Jesus says, I never knew you. You see, you're saved not because of your works, not because you repented of your sins, not because you're perfect and you've deserved it and you've earned it somehow, that you've proven yourself. No, you're saved because of your relationship with God. If you've come to the cross and have been born again, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. You become one spirit with the Lord. There's no way Jesus can say, I never knew you. Because he knows you. He made you anew at the cross. He knows you intimately. You're saved at that point. You need to have that deep relationship with God. Just as... Adam knew Eve and she conceived. You need to know God on that level where you are born again. You receive the word of God, which is the seed of God, into your heart, which would be your womb. I know as a man, you might not want to think of that, but that's how it is. Eat the humble pie so that you receive the seed of God, that you may be born again. You see, the women help us understand our role to God. 
because to God we are the bride, the bride of Christ. We are as the woman. So you need to eat the humble pie, receive the seed, so that you can be born again. But a lot of Christians, they are just like a lot of women today. We don't need a man. So they're never going to be born again. Right? A lot of Christians, we don't need God. We can do it ourselves. And they take on the name Christian. Christians seem to be the easiest people to fool. Because all you got to do is say you're Christian. And they'll follow after you. You can be preaching lies because they don't test you to the scriptures. Donald Trump is a good example of a lot of Christians just blindly following him because he said he was Christian. Even though what he asked was asked if he comes to Jesus to ask for forgiveness. He says, no, no, I don't really do that. I, I don't really see myself as a bad person and I just try to do better. So he's not a Christian. He's never been born again. He doesn't believe the gospel, the good news of our salvation. He doesn't even believe he needs it. Yet, the Christians are holding him up as if he's Christian and as if he's the, the savior of our country. Right? They're making an idol out of him. And he, obviously, he's a pompous ass. Right? And the only reason why he looks good is because the left looks so bad. If it wasn't because of the left looking so hideous, you would be able to see clearly that Trump is no better. He just says you what you want to hear. But then somebody like me, who preaches to you the truth, but then I might say a word you don't like. Like I might say shit or ass, and all of a sudden you're offended and you turn off the video right here saying this guy's not a Christian, you never listen to a thing I say, because I said a couple of words, that the Bible doesn't say not to say. The Bible doesn't say not to say any words like that. It says not to have corrupt speaking and guile. Corrupt speaking is what you get from politicians like Trump. That lie. And that's what guile is. It's manipulation. Fake feigned words. Flattery. I'm not doing that. I'm not speaking anything corrupt. And just instead of saying crap or butt, sometimes I end up saying shit or ass. And me saying that right now, you probably getting mad. And that's probably because you're an immature Christian, or not even Christian at all. You're just Christian in name only. And that's why you follow fake Christians so easily. So if you're offended by such things, have fun. Go away. You're not breaking my heart. You're, you're not taking anything from me. You're only hurting yourself by rejecting the truth and following after bullshit. So thanks for watching. Now I'm going to splice into something from Rockman that I really enjoy for the end of this. Take care. That fella couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? Amen. So that fella didn't take the sacraments. Didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary. Didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe. Didn't tithe. He went to heaven. He went to hell. You saved? <laughs> didn't keep the law. He didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments. He broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule. He didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory. He woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest thy kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be saved. It's like that. You have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that.